Bismillah, alhamdulillah, ve salatu ve salam, Resulullah. Elhamdülillah, Rabbil Alameen. We give all the thanks, all the praise to Almighty Allah because who Allah the Jalla Muslimin, because He is the one who made us Muslims. Islam is not something you can buy, it's not something you can earn. It is rather something that is available for those who will commit. Sincerely asking Almighty Allah, guide me, Edina, Surat Mustaqim, asking Allah. And if it's sincere, Allah will guide. And nobody can come in between that person and that guidance. Nobody. Nor can anybody give that guidance to somebody else if Allah doesn't allow it to happen because it's all from Allah. A part of being a Muslim is to understand something called the, what I call the beauty of Islam which is to explain why things happen the way they happen. Oftentimes we see things happening and we're at a loss to get any understanding from it. As an example, what just happened in Nepal, they had huge earthquakes, yeah? They had really big ones, giant earthquakes. But did you know they're not as big as some of the earthquakes that we have every month in other parts of the world? Do you know why we don't hear about them? Because they happen in the water. They happen up in the areas of the mountains or forests or jungles where nobody lives. So we don't care. We don't care. There was a nine point something earthquake, so and so. In Japan, oh my God, that's a oh, 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 oh. Big earthquake happened off the coast of New Zealand, but anybody get hurt? No, nope. it's no story, so we don't put it in the news. And the reason, because human beings relate everything to themselves. Human beings do go from their own perspective. Even when they try to make up religions, they go from their own perspective because they, a God should be what? Something I can understand, so I'll make up a God. That's why so many religions have gods that are humans. Think about Buddha. He's a man, right? Christ, Christians. A man. And when you think about it, you see why these people twisted these things to come up with something they could relate to, something they could understand. In our project, we have the Islam Newsroom. We try to bring things from a different perspective, not just how I look at it as a human, as a man, and not just as a woman would look at it, as a female. But we look at it, try to present it, well, let me put it that way. We try to present things in a way that anybody could understand how things are coming from a law. So we take the example so you can see how easy this is. In Nepal, big earthquakes, people dying, lots of people died. And there wasn't any discrimination whatsoever. No discrimination. Didn't matter what color they were. Didn't matter what their religion was, didn't matter what their ethnicity was, what their genealogy was, didn't matter what languages they could speak, they died. They were injured. Houses fell on top of them just like anybody else. Some Hindus ran out of their temple to be safe. The temple came down on top of them and killed them. Some Christians were killed, some Muslims were killed. We cannot look at these events and begin to put our thinking on it and say, this is why this happened, this is why that happened. Rather, we should look to who? The one who made everything happen. The one who created the universe in the first place. What did he say? He said, Who He said he is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six time periods, then rose over or established himself over his throne. So let's find out. He said he created everything. Well, what does he say about all of this? And if you read the Quran, especially in the Arabic language, with understanding, you begin to understand more and more and more why things are happening. 
and to come to this particular topic, why do bad things happen to good people? There's some people, really nice people, you probably met some guys, really nice, generous, kind, does good things, take care of their parents, and you're like, man, this guy's got all the qualities of a good Muslim, except he doesn't believe in God. Well, he's a nice guy, right? Not to Allah. So why would this guy have to go to hell? Ah, when you read the Quran, you begin to understand. In the end of Surah al dariyat the very last part of it, if you, it's chapter 51, verse 56. It says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا يَعْبَدُونَ Allah says, I did not create the humans and jinn except to worship me. This is why you were created. Now, if you read the Quran, you find that all of us were pulled out of the backbone of Adam. So it means we were all, all of us were in Adam's backbone. By the way, we know in Islam, his height was what? How many? 60 cubits tall, which is roughly 120, 150 something feet big, really big. Cubits about 30 to 32 inches. <clears throat> Based on this the story of us all being pulled out, Allah said it, he pulled us out and then he asked us, because we we're all in front of Allah, he said, am I not your Lord? And we all said, yes. Then he erased it and put us back in. Raised it from our memory and put us back in. That's easy to relate to today, right? Like if you have uh, an SD card, you know, flash drive, put it in your pocket, then drop your battery or your phone in there with it, what'll happen? Erase it, <laughs> just like that. In the same way Allah erased our memories. We have no memory of this except reading it in the Quran and we know that Allah said that. Now why? What was the point of this? Why would Allah do that? Why would he take us out? And why would he tell us the story? How about that one? And then why did he pull us out of a, the backbone of Adam? Ask us a question and then put us back and erase it. What's the benefit? He also tells us in the Quran that we'll all be brought back. We're all going to be resurrected and brought back in front of Allah again. You were there and then you'll be back. And the distance in time between that could be, what, millions of years, thousands of years? Who knows, right? But it'll feel like an hour or two. That's it. A small part of a day. That's it. And we'll be like, oh, will we know that there's a problem? Mm -hmm. Why? Because then you remember. Allah said in the Quran, then the people will remember. But what benefit will it be to remember then? What do you think he's talking about? You're going to remember your first meeting, and you're going to remember all the things you did, and now you are there to answer for everything you did. <gasps> now you see why they call it this day, the day of trauma. <coughs> the day of facing your Lord, knowing everything. <coughs> Oops. This now begins to help us analyze from Allah's perspective, and he's telling us this is from his perspective, that he's watching everything we do all the time. He already knew what we were going to do. He put us in this life. Now, wait a minute. Now, check this out. Some people will say, hey, if Allah already knows, and it's already a done deal, nothing I can do to stop it, right? It's going to happen. It's not my fault, right? It's true that everything that happens comes from Allah. Everything. And you can't stop it. But check this out. What was your attitude? What did you feel while it was going on? If you said, oh, I can't help it, I have to rob a bank today. <laughs> Doesn't work. Because you planned it. You put it together. You say, well, if Allah doesn't want it to happen, he just won't let me rob the bank. Hmm? Yeah, right. Doesn't work like that. 
and Allah will be asking us about our intention behind each and everything we did. And that's for sure. Now it begins to make a little bit better sense because if you were created, as we already learned, to do one thing, one thing, that when you worship, who do you worship? When you worship, who should you worship? Now, can you worship something else along with him? And this is what he mentions in the Quran in chapter 4, verse 48, when he tells us, no way, he starts out for saying, for sure, there's no way I am ever going to forgive something called shirk. But anything less than that, he can forgive. And whoever has come up with this shirk, they have invented something that's a major sin. And this is clear that Allah, he, he doesn't like this, okay? So now we need to find out what is shirk. Shirk is to make partners, a partnership with Allah and something he created. When you consider what we know about Allah from him, from Allah, telling us in the Quran about his majesty, about his glory, about the things of Allah, you can't compare him to anything else. It, it says clearly about this in the Quran. basir. Here Allah said there isn't anything else, Laysa means isn't, isn't anything else to compare with Allah. Then he says, Wahua semion basir. Semi wa basir. What does this mean? He said hearing and seeing. Now wait a minute. I can see and I can hear. So isn't that comparing Allah to me? And that's his point right there. Because his hearing and his seeing is not like your hearing and seeing. Everybody in this room can see what's going on in the room, right? You can see what's going on, right? Yeah, you see everything, right? That's your opinion, isn't it? Can you see what's behind you? Well, yeah, if I turn around, okay, now can you see what's behind you? Well, if I turn back again, no, Allah sees everything all the time. Can you see what's over your head? Now can you see what's below you? Now can you see what, you get it? And you're only here. What, and Allah is seeing the whole entire universe at the same time. So his seeing is not like our seeing. And you say, I can hear. I can, you can hear me, right? So you can hear everything. That's in our brain. But it's not real. There are sounds in this room that none of us can hear. Did you hear it? Okay, then that's not one of the sounds, is it? <laughs> Dogs hear sounds we can't hear. This is why they howl. This is why they bark. Coming from a musical background, I can tell you there are bass tones, real deep bass tones, so deep, I can watch a string on a, grand, a super grand piano. They have extra keys on a nine and a half foot grand. When you hit it, you have to listen real close to hear it because it's so deep. But it's loud. It'll register on a meter. Whoa, like this. But in your ear, you're like, I hardly heard it. Also, real high pitches. You don't hear them. Dogs hear them. Donkeys can hear them. So, Allah doesn't compare to the universe. And making a cre something from creation as a partner with Him is shirk. So if you said, well, I have a lucky rabbit's foot that brings me good luck. I get stuff from having this lucky rabbit's foot. This is shirk. He said, but I believe in Allah, but I believe in my lucky rabbit's foot too. Or I have a lucky horseshoe. That's another one that they have. My horoscope. I like to read, I, you know, maybe I'm a Gemini, maybe I'm a Pisces or whatever. And I like to go and look in the... Well, just for fun, but, I'll, but you know, just kind of check it out. Oh, wow, I found out, oh, this good thing is going to happen to me today. Just reading it, just going to these kind of people who do palm reading, crystal balls and predictions, all that kind of psychic readers and all that. Our prophet, peace be upon him, told us, Allah will not accept your prayers, your salat, for 40 days. And that's if you didn't believe it. You just did it for fun. If you did believe it, 
Then you need to start all over in, again in Islam, make a new shahada. This is a very serious thing. Now let's go back and revisit the story of Nepal. Or anywhere there's a disaster. There are some of those people are good. Some of those people are evil. But good to us and evil to us is one subject. Good to Allah and evil to Allah is another subject. Because some of these people that we thought were so good, maybe in front of Allah they weren't. Maybe their intention, their inside was they were doing it so that people would praise them. Maybe they were doing it because they felt a superstition. If I do this, I'll get that. If I do this, I'll get that. Without even thinking about Allah. That's not up to us. That's to him to judge. Allah said in the Quran, Alayhi bi akamil harakimeen. Isn't Allah the best of judges? So don't judge. Also, you see somebody that you think, man, this guy, he doesn't have a chance. He is the worst scumbag. I know he's got a Muslim name, but he's blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure he's going to go to hell. Be careful. Because listen to what Prophet Sallallahu told us. He told us that two guys, it's a story he told us. There were two guys from the time of the Israeli, at Bani Israel, that one of them was very religious. The other one, he made lots of mistakes. He was always doing the wrong thing, bad stuff. So the one who was religious would go to him and say, listen, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. You're not doing this right, you're not doing that right. And every time he go to him, the guy said, no, 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 just go away, leave me alone. Finally, he gave up. He said, you know what, you're going to go to hell forever. That's it. On the day of judgment, they were both in front of Allah. And the one was being asked, what you did with your life and so? He said, I guess I'm going to go to hell. Who told you that? He did. So Allah said, what? He said, the man said, Allah is never going to forgive you. You're going to go to hell. Allah said, I forgive you. You go to paradise. And him will go to hell. Why this man? Why this man who's so religious, so good, we thought he was so perfect? Look, he took the place of Allah when he said, Allah can't forgive. Allah does not like that. I'm going to wrap it up with this and let you think about it. When we did our first Hajj in 1993, had a beautiful American convert brother who was our leader for our Hajj group. And when we got together in Mina, the night before we go for Arafat, out for the day of Arafat. He called us together and he said, come, I want to tell you a hadith in English. He said, there's a hadith of Rasul Salam that he asked his companions on an occasion like this, here for Hajj. He said, do you know who's the worst human being? Rasul Salam asked his companions, do you know who's the worst human being? They said, no. He said, it's the one who Sat on Arafat means he went out there and Hajj and he was praying and crying and asking Allah and he doesn't believe Allah forgave him. The next day when we were on Arafat, the Imam, he called us over again. He said, okay, I want to tell you a hadith. He said, a hadith of Rasul Sallallahu that he asked his companions, who is the worst person? They said, we don't know. He said, the one who sat on Arafat and he didn't believe Allah forgave him. When we got back to Mina, you have the Musdalfa in between, you know, but then when you get back to Mina, two days later we were there, the Imam called us together and told us the same hadith again. Who's the worst person? The one who sat on Arafat and didn't believe he was forgiven. A similar hadith to this one is the one when the Prophet ﷺ called his companions together. I think maybe they were in Medina, Allah But he asked then, who's the worst person? They said, we don't know. He said, it's the one who made so many sins, masia, his major sins, ithem, big sins. And he made so many that he thought Allah couldn't forgive him. What does that tell us? No matter how much mistake you ever made, Allah can forgive it, provided one thing. You have to believe in Allah, you have to ask Allah, and you have to be sincere in asking him to forgive you, meaning you won't do it anymore. 
This is the one that Allah loves. Not the one that's pretentious going out here in his fancy clothes, big car, oh, I'm a righteous guy, look, I give charity, I did this, I built a masjid, I, I, I. Doesn't work. Only Allah knows who are the people he's going to put at the top. But everybody in this room has got just as much chance as anybody else. Unless you think you never made any sense. If you think this, you're already lost. Because we were not created to be perfect. We were not made to be angels. We were created, Allah said in Quran, He made us to sin, make mistakes, and then ask Him for forgiveness, and then He would forgive us. That's what you're created for. So don't worry about that. Just worry about, did I ask Allah to forgive me? Am I sincere? Am I trying to do better? And I ask Allah to accept from all of us, to forgive all of us, and make it so those people who will enter the Jannah, Mafi Hesab, without any reckoning. Ameen. Jakumullah khair. We'll make dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fil akhirti hasan wa kina dava nar. Rabbana la tu akhidna inna sina wa aktana. Rabbana wa la taha mila alina isran kama hamaltuhu ala ladina min kablina. Rabbana wa la tuha mila mila tu katulana bih. Wafu'ana, wafu'ana, warhamna. Anta Mawlana Fansurna Allah al Kaum al Kafirin. Allahumma anta Rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa anna abdika wa anna ala ahdika wa wahtika masatatu a'udhu bika min shari masanatu abu laka mandik natika alayya wa abu badhammi fagfirli fa inahu la yagfru the nubi illa ant. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad khama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim ina khamidun majid. Allahumma baraka ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama baraka ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim ina khamidun majid. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen huwa ala di jawna muslimin.